Hello everyone, I am Bridget Collins and I'm Head of Clinical Education at Qfora. And I'm here today with Jane Turner, Colorectal Specialist Nurse at Neville Hall Hospital, Abergavenny in Wales. Thank you so much for joining me today, Jane. Oh, you're very welcome, Bridget. Oh, it's lovely to have you on board. Now, I know we're going to look at psychological readiness and how applicable it is when initiating um, rectal irrigation. I wonder if you could explain to our audience what psychological readiness entails, what it means exactly. In simple terms, it's a readiness to carry out an action. Um, psychological readiness for activity is thought of as a specific emotional and motivational state. Um, so some of the articles describe a need for a sense of urgency um, for change, an urgency mm. for change, um, or a perceived understanding that whatever it is that you're going to do will be beneficial to us. Um, so it, I suppose it's your attitude to, um, yes. to what's going to happen. Yes, yes. An um, attitude, I suppose, to a task as well. Yes. Um, OK, so it's about being prepared for a task. How ready are you to do a task? That's essentially what it means, do you think? Yes, exactly that. So my understanding as well from psychological readiness, and, I, and I've been really interested in this for quite some time. Um, uh, my understanding is it's been applied across quite a few diverse settings. Uh, so, for example, in the sports world, so an athlete that may have an injury may feel physically ready to go back into those sports, but psychologically they may not be ready. So they can be tested with a psychological readiness scale to see how ready they are to go back into that sport. Is Have I got that right? Yes, it's interesting, isn't it? It is really interesting. Um, and so if that's if that's how it tends to work what are your thoughts on introducing it into the realm of rectal irrigation we often get well i say we i often get frustrated that i know i've got <laughs> something for the patient that is going to be great for them and they they're reluctant you know to start it a little bit like you know they're ready to go back on the rugby pitch but psychologically they're not quite ready to get there yes um so I think if if we can understand their viewpoint as to what it is that's making them hesitant, um, we can sometimes just explore that with them. And it might be something that we need to return to at a later date, um, or it might be mm. something that they're just absolutely not interested in at all, but we can get that feeling from them. Um, it's just something that we can explore on a, on a different level with them, I think. Yeah, so I suppose it's exploring all those um, barriers, I guess, we, we're thinking of really, but in a very simplistic way. And when I say simplistic way, I mean, I, I, I'm i thinking of scales and things. And would you say that was the best way to introduce it into um, rectal irrigation? Yes, I think it needs to be simple. It needs to be simple for two reasons, really, both for the patients um, and also uh, for us as clinicians, as part of our, our working day, we don't want anything that's going to be mm -hmm. too complicated and not easy to implement. I was reading that a person might be energised to do something, but they haven't got the right equipment right. to move on with that. Right. What What exactly does that mean? Well, it's if they're ready but they haven't got the right equipment so they haven't so maybe for a patient they're really desperate to try anything but they haven't got access to us and so they don't know that that's available right they're not in a much better situation than somebody who were saying oh look I've got this but they're not ready to use it right so it's trying to marry those two things up to get them at the right time okay well that makes perfect sense so if you were to introduce something like a scale within um, rectal irrigation, what, what does that look like exactly? I think it needs to be the right questions. Um, and it, it could just be, like I was saying before, sort of slowly and gently. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to start to help start that conversation. Um, yes about the next step for the treatments and um, it can help the patient to understand 
what they're feeling about their condition and what the treatment might entail for them. And the scale can just bridge that gap between maybe almost being ready and getting onto the irrigation system. Yeah. It might be something very small that needs to, to be addressed with them. Or in, in the case of a lady that I was using the scale with, it was really that she didn't understand what it was and she really just needed to see it. Ah, OK. So that's that's a great way of using it as well, isn't it? It's interesting that you say that because we when we went to Bladder and Bowel UK back in September in Coventry, we did have like a bit of a sofa type chat where we talked about psychological readiness and the um, I think it was Jess Kid Coots was then saying um, she'd prefer it to be not to be numbers but to prefer it to be words so mm -hmm. say for example um, are you ready to use rectal irrigation it could be at one end of the scale completely not ready at all or the other end of the scale completely ready and she said that was more beneficial because patients can really explain things better with words rather than numbers. What, what's your thoughts on that? I think that that's absolutely right. And also, if they say, oh, I'm not ready at all, you can then say, why? What makes you feel that way? You know, and, and you can yes. explore it a bit better than if they just say one or five. It, yes. it brings a little bit more understanding to it. Yes, yes, I agree. I think I I, I do like that. I must admit, I um, did think the numbers uh, were going to be used to start with. But now that we've had all these conversations, um, it seems like words is the best way forward with mm. that. Um, so you I think you've you've just said that you've used it in clinical practice which is really great because I know we're we're testing it um in clinical practice with a few hospitals just to see how it works and you said um your lady wasn't ready at all to use it but it was pretty obvious why how, how what were your words when you actually spoke to her about it what what words did you use and what was your conversation like with that patient so the lady um, was very reluctant and kept saying, oh, no, I don't like the sound of it. I don't you know, I don't think that I'll be able to do mm. that. It, it doesn't sound very nice. And so we looked at the scale and um, she was scoring. She was scoring sort of slight, slightly ready to mm -hmm. try something mm -hmm. um to get something done but she wasn't too she was sort of very unsure about using the irrigation so I said why don't I show it to you and we'll see how you feel once you've seen it all right so I got it out showed it to her and then she was putting it together and everything she said do you know it's not as bad as I thought it was going to be oh. So she oh. did sign up for it. So it sounded like just that little bit of information of showing her what it was, how it works. It was there was a fear factor there, wasn't there for her, really? So she was saying she was slightly ready. So she was in hoping to have a go, but wasn't quite sure. After you'd shown her how how it worked and everything, what about where do you think she would have sat on the scale then? She was very ready. She right yeah it's, um, signed her up for it and she seems happy with it oh that's really good that's really good um so I mean it sounded like it worked really well for you at that particular time um and I think I I really do have this good feeling that this would be good to introduce into clinical practice when would you introduce it into clinical practice is it very early on in um, the bowel assessment or what when would you introduce it? I think it's interesting isn't it because just because somebody perhaps isn't ready at that moment to to have an irrigation system it doesn't mean the conversation can't be started. Yes. Um, which I think is getting that psychological preparedness yes. in motion for them so that yeah. they sort of yeah. know it's an option that might be available for them in the future if all else yeah. fails or however you want to phrase that yes um, I think by allowing them that time then isn't it so yeah maybe at the beginning um at the beginning of a bowel assessment or the rectal irrigation assessment maybe at the even at the beginning of the bowel assessment yeah because it, yeah. it's not a bad idea actually I find to outline with some patients 
what the treatment options are you know so we're going to start with this and don't worry if that it isn't entirely the answer there's something else there's something else yes and so yes. on and so forth so that they yeah. know that they're not going to they if they're not quite getting it with the diet changes or laxatives that all is not lost there is something else to try that's interesting that you should say that because when I was at St Mark's we used to have support from our um, psychotherapists and psychiatrists each week for our um, how we deal with patients and that's one thing that they said is to prepare patients well in advance and that really takes away any fears and anxieties that they may have so that's kind of what you're saying isn't it it is yes it is yeah so that's a really good idea to do that mm -hmm.